V8. Carbon fiber. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes, this is my beautiful girlfriend Kat, and you join us from the cockpit of Kat's mum Angelina's Vauxhall mock-up. Today we're going to meet a subscriber called Gary, who owns one of the standout cars from all the ones that I've shared on my social media over the last couple of years. The car in question is a Mark 1 Escort, but it's not your average everyday Mark 1 Escort build. In fact, some might say it's not actually a Mark 1 Escort at all. Enjoying the turbo. Yeah, actually. All right, so we've made it to our destination where we join Gary. We've got Ian over here who's actually making a carbon fiber piece at the moment. Wayne's here as well. And Caroline, who has very kindly just rustled us up a fried breakfast. And there's no better way to start the day. So yeah, we'll tuck into this grub and we'll go and check out Gary's Mark 1 and also some of the beautiful carbon fiber parts there in this room. Right, so now my belly's full, let's check out Gary's Mark 1 Escort. Right, first thing to mention about this Mark 1 Escort is that the body shell is made completely of fiberglass, meaning that this car is very light and as a result, very fast, especially seeing as it's got a V8 under the bonnet, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Now, as you can see, it's a bubble arched shell and the bubble arches have been filled nicely with these Revolution alloy wheels, 16 inch. And if we look through the spokes of this front wheel, we can see that it's got some high spec four pot brake calipers fitted. Now there are loads of carbon fiber pieces bolted to this car with more to come in the near future. Now Gary actually manufactures carbon fiber parts for Mark 1 Escorts and classic minis with other cars coming in the future. So if you're after any carbon fiber parts for your car, definitely get in touch with Gary. I'll leave his contact details in the description of this video. If we come around the front of this Escort, we can see that it's got a carbon fiber grill and the fiberglass bib spoiler and the fiberglass bonnet will soon be changed for some of Gary's own carbon fiber parts as well. Now this car has been painted in iron grey by Gary himself and looks really good against the light grey RS2000 stripes. Got a set of carbon fibre door mirrors. We'll ignore the badge on the wing for a minute. This thing looks so mean from every angle. Loving the Hoonigan mud flaps. You'll notice that this car isn't fitted with any bumpers and Gary is toying with the idea of fitting a set of his own carbon fibre bumpers. The fiberglass boot lid has got this fiberglass ducktail spoiler attached to it. Now Gary can actually make a carbon fibre boot lid with or without the ducktail and he can make the ducktail on its own as well for anyone who fancies just the spoiler. Now as you've probably noticed from the badges already, underneath this escort shaped body shell, it is in fact a TVR 350i. Gary fully restored the TVR chassis before he bolted the Escort body shell to it and he also fitted gas suspension all round. Underneath you can see the TVR chassis. The LSD diff is actually from a Jaguar XJ6 though. But yeah, this is a much more advanced rear axle setup than you would find on an Escort. As a result, the car handles a lot better than an Escort as well. Right, let's have a look in the cockpit. 
stupidly light fiberglass door. Got some more carbon fiber in there with the dash top, the door cards, a nice roll cage in the back. Really smart bucket seats with these TRS harnesses. OMP deep dish steering wheel. Some nice aftermarket gauges in the dashboard. Right, on the dash here, we've got a race logic data logger and below that we've got a couple of afr gauges to monitor the air fuel ratio of the engine obviously with this being a v8 got one per side you'll notice that it's got a really wide transmission tunnel going through the whole car and that's basically governed by the shape of the tubular tvr chassis beneath definitely really different than your your average escort build but yeah really really cool just have a look in the boot, which is held up by these gas struts. Yeah, I've got a nice custom alloy fuel tank. Gary was saying it's quite small and he's planning on maybe putting a bigger one in at some point. Got the battery mounted in the boot as well, inside a proper case. Still got plenty of room for some shopping. Yeah, run up Lazarus. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's time to have a look at the heart of the beast. Yeah, as you can see, the bonnet opens the other way. Is that how it would have been on the TVR? Yeah. yeah. Reason being, brake servos right where the hinge would be on a Ford. Yeah. But yeah, as you can see, we have a TVR V8, and Gary was saying that this is a Rover V8. Basically a Rover V8, slightly yeah. tuned up a bit. Yeah. Now it's quite set far back in the engine bay in escort terms, but it's actually mounted to the TVR chassis where it would have been in the TVR. Stainless steel exhaust manifolds and system. Hiding under this pancake air filter is a big four barrel carburetor. Nice alloy pieces like the header tank and the radiator. Gary doesn't use this car on track or anything like that, but he is already talking to Piper about a slightly larrier cam. And I think you said you're going to be changing the wheels soon as well. Maybe. Maybe. Of, um, 17 inch, similar to the compromise yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll put a picture up of the wheels that Gary is planning to fit. But yeah, that is Gary's V8 fiberglass shelled Mark 1 Escort. Right, so first time out in a V8 Mark 1 Escort for me let alone a fiberglass shelled one. <laughs> so how long did it take you to build this in total? 18 months on and off, it was mainly weekends. Saturdays and Sundays. Didn't take you long then? No, because I work with fiberglass. Yeah. It's, you know, building, nah, it's building boats, it's second nature to me really. Have you owned like normal escorts as well in the past? Oh, I've probably had about 10 or 12 mile on escorts. Wow. In the past. Nothing exciting. The best yeah. one was probably a 1300 GT. Oh, okay. Which was a four wheel, which is quite rare. Yeah. That was burgundy and green sort of colour. Okay. And that got stolen. Oh. Outside the house. And they kind of left a a poo brown mark one it's got two door in its place no they, way that they stole from paul's grove no <laughs> way no, that's yeah. cheeky <laughs> you can tell it handles the road much more than an escort would if you know what i mean uh, but, yeah having the tvr set up yeah suspension wise it helps big time yeah Throw it around the corners, it's got no body roll. Yeah. It's it's hard to get it sideways. Okay. Probably due to the way it's been set up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's built for handling. Yeah, that's not it. for driving in Mexico all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
still got like the TBR gearbox in it and all that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah the LG 77 box. A bit awkward to use. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
makes it a lot stronger, a lot lighter because the resin is put in at production and it's an exact quantity of resin. There's no guessing to it at all. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, Ian is currently making a Mark One Escort grill out of carbon fiber. Obviously done in pre-preg. The second layer, the yeah. final layer. Yeah. Basically just going over from the first one making sure any joints that you have here, you can see those joints on the camera, Yeah. making sure they're far apart from the first joints. Okay, yeah. Because on the first ply, it came up to here on the first joint. Yeah. So now the second joint's at least 50 mil away to yeah. give it the strength. Yeah, yeah. That grill that Ian's making is gonna be this design, so slightly different than the one that Gary's got fitted to his car. This one's got the two big holes in it and then the mesh will be bonded onto it afterwards. So yeah, it's a proper operation down here. At the moment, the guys are actually putting some brackets onto one of their carbon fiber front lips so that it can be screwed to the front panel of a Mark 1 Escort. Gary's just roughing the surface where they need to go. The bracket will be put in place. We're using this as a template to get a rough idea where they're gonna go. Then we're gonna use dry cloth weave laid across the top and then we're gonna use a bonding glue so this is a structural glue. I can't pronounce that. Meth. See that starts coming straight through to the cloth. This takes around about 10 minutes to dry. Oh, cool, yeah. So it's quite a fast cure. Yeah, one thing I briefly mentioned when Gary took me for a spin in his Mark 1 is that he's actually going to be making a complete Mark 1 Escort shell one day out of carbon fibre and you're going to be selling those to anyone who fancies one as well, hopefully. Yeah, if it's not too expensive. Yeah, but yeah, as far as I know, there is no full carbon Mark 1 Escort in yeah, the world at the moment. So yeah, you, you'll probably be the first one to do that. Exposed carbon fibre Mark 1 Escort. Yeah. Just, just, just lacquered. Maybe with a tint of a colour in the lacquer. Yeah. Just to change it slightly. Yeah. So yeah, if you've got really deep pockets and you fancy a complete carbon fibre Mark 1 Escort, Definitely get in touch with Gary. All right, so back to these three Mark 1 Escort panels. I'm actually gonna be purchasing one of these panels for Esther, my ST170 powered Mark 1 Escort. Let me know in the comment section which one you think I'm gonna be buying or which one you would buy if you had to choose one out of the three. Obviously, I'd love to take all three of them home if I could afford it. Uh, maybe I'll come back one day and get the other two. There are so many other cool cars in the workshops in this same yard, so I'm just going to put a little montage together. Nice to meet you. And you. Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Ian has now finished the second layer of carbon fiber on this grill. So now you lay this. This is a release film. Release film on it. So that, you, you've got to push it all in. Yeah. Make sure it's in there like that. You don't want it, it's called bridging. You don't want it to do that. Right. Otherwise it'll come out dry underneath. Yeah. Whatever well, resin spots over this side as well. Then it'll have the breather layer on top of it. And that gets pushed right into the gaps as well. So we'll put it on, put that, that on there. That's a valve for the vacuum, eh? Yeah, just gotta be careful not to put any holes in the bag. So it's just really sticky, dull side of tape, broken. Yeah, it's got to be called a tacky tape. Yeah. Loops down, high temperature. You always want to watch out for these creases. Any one of those creases can let air in. Moment of truth, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so now that it's sort of shrunk to the shape. It's all vacuumed down. And then now this goes in the oven, basically. Yeah, we'd probably just pull into here, make sure the corners are all in. Yeah. And then it's sort of ready for the oven, make sure the bow air leaks. Yeah. And it's ready to go. 
And then when it comes out of the oven, just pop the carbon out of the mould, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's interesting. Always wondered how carbon fibre bits are made. All right, so the guys are going to put this in the oven in a couple of days. They're going to leave it till after the weekend. Probably make something else for going there as well. There's no point putting just one. Yeah, yeah. In there, so. This carbon stuff is uh, very time consuming. And obviously the materials are really expensive as well. But yeah, we're going to get out of your way. But yeah, massive thanks for letting us come down and have a look at your Escort TV art. <coughs> and yeah, it was nice to have a little insight into what goes into these carbon pieces. It just shows people what's involved yeah. and how time consuming it is. No, it is. People I can see that. why things are so expensive. Yeah, no, yeah now I understand. Yeah. Right, so as I mentioned, if you're after any carbon fibre parts for your Mark 1 Escort or your Classic Mini, definitely get in touch with Gary. I'll leave a link to his Facebook page in the description of this video. I'll also leave his telephone number down there. But right now, I'm going to end this video here. If you did think it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe to keep up to date with all my future uploads. And check the links in the description to my social media and my website. I'll also leave my email address down there for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, from me, my beautiful girlfriend Kat, and Gary and Ian, thanks for watching.